Okay, Swami Shankarananda was a disciple of Swami Brahmananda and knew many of the direct disciples. He was a member of the first governing body of the Ramakrishna Mission, the seventh president of the Ramakrishna Order from 1951 through 1962. In 1953-54, he gave brahmacharya to Sarada Mat nuns and then sannyas to a group in 1954 before he opened the Sarada Mat headquarters in December 54. He was instrumental in starting the training center at Bellarmat, and you received your sannyas from him in 1956. Um, so today we're going to talk about Swami Shankarananda. Would you like to show us his picture? This is Swami Shankarananda. And Swamiji, uh, when did you first meet Swami Shankarananda Ji and what were your first impressions? I first saw him of course when I came for initiation I must have seen him but not much impression in my mind. Then I came to study in Calcutta. I was already initiated so uh, then I joined their Belmont College. Before that, now and then I used to go to see him as a regular salutation, this, that. He would not talk much. So for some time I did not go because he did not talk much. How long to go on, on saluting? Then one day she was sitting near the office, some place used to see. So open I found, I saluted. Then very disarmed, he said, you don't come to see me nowadays. <laughs> I felt so ashamed. Such a grave man, you see. He was the president at that time? Yeah, yeah. He was president. Uh, no, he was still vice president. Mm -hmm. Still vice president. Uh, so after that, of course, more regularly began to go. But before that, when I became the superintendent of the Belmont College Hostel, I was fresh joined. And I put, so I went to some elders to get their advice, what we should do. So I went to him and told Maharaj, I have been put like this. Now what exactly we are expected to do for the students? They are normal students, not becoming a sadhus, they're between 18 and 22 age. So what should we give them? Then he told me, you see, if you can introduce a little spirit of discrimination, that to work, not out of emotion, but keep the emotional control, analyze and then do it. That is enough. So that is Viveka. That if the discriminator do it, the rest of the things will come in future. Uh, actual spirituality cannot be given like this. But if you can introduce that they think and then do what is good, that is enough. So that is one thing. And so when I went to him, I told him, Maharaj, I have seen you later. I have seen you in Kashi. Uh, in such and such year, as a student I went after my BA examination, that is 43, he was in Kashi. So he was there sitting, he just brought his book. By that time he became president, I think. And his, di his diary was on the table, old diary. Yes, I was in Kashi at that time. Hmm. So immediate uh, that I was in Kashi. And then later days, I was in Madras Brahmachari. And at that time, he came two, three times and stayed there. First as vice president, uh, I remember, by that time, he became a, already a Brahmachari. Actually, he came to Madras uh, before getting bows or bows. He came, I was before that a superintendent of the hostel and a lecturer. After two years overnight, I was transferred to Madras 
as a brahmachari cleaning the vessels sweeping and all that so they thought after this big job suddenly coming down probably because in those days puja these there was given to people who are not so educated now everybody is given so they thought i may react so he called me and asked me he was with great admiration how you are like it you know is all right he was very impressed that i did not wrongly react to this same thing happened with madhavan the also later all the came so that was what happened so now he had many disciples that once he arranged the reading of the complete works of vivekananda as a group or the 108 people or so and evening there was a talk and he wanted to come and give blessings so he came and said i bless you must did not talk anything but many of the people who are his disciples they are satisfied that he said i bless you but you could not make him talk <laughs> they everybody has expected that if you advise you dear deep but his presence was a wonderful presence that people would be impressed by his presence so i remember john yale with that band so his grandfather look was a great a great impression on us i read in a book that rabindranath tagore told he is the most enjoyable companion and another writer uh, leo iris he told i never seen such a man who was so pleasant and kind in my life i don't think then say brahma and as soon as he saw him said yes you will have it that is have realization the same thing girish chandra also told like this so he is outside look was so beautiful grand looking and by the time he was older very grave looking of course you would not talk much also but as i said he told me oh you don't come that is inside there is a great loving heart affectionate heart mm-hmm. but outside you would not saw the manifestation so much that idea could you tell us anything about your um sanyas yes. initiation yeah i should say so when we had sanyas the custom is all the people again go back go back to him and he gives some advice he tell you see you have all so many years you have spent as brahmacharya you are not a swami you do things of course you will do all of the normal things of life life job dhyan uh, studies service everything but i advise you to have a hobby because in sadhu life now and then very dry period comes but a dry period comes at that time you don't know how to spend the time life becomes uninteresting so develop a habit hobby like raising gardening raising animals cows milk then honey bee like that create a sort of a special interest and in your dull moments that will they'll save you there is a special thing is said other than spiritual things and there is the specialty normally that advice is not given but for a daily life is said uh there is the special very special thing as for life of course he advised is a man would never stay sit bent like hari maharaj was always sitting straight and he used to tell i either sit straight or lie down i don't <laughs> in between i don't do anything and he had normally i thought there is not much ill ailment but he had some pain so he used to suffer from that pain 
Otherwise, normal diseases. See, the health is very good. In young days, he had very strong health. Very strong health. Oh, he was the nephew of Swami Sadananda. Sadananda is uncle, uh, Sarachanda Gupta. His name was Amrita Sen Gupta. But his uncle used to call him as Amulya. So he became famous as Amulya Maharaj. And he went with the Sadananda Niveta to Japan once. Then twice they tried to send him to America. One is almost settled. But then he heard that he has to take injection for pox and some other disease. He refused. No, I cannot go. <laughs> but if you can't take, you cannot go. I won't go. Why? Because my guru asked me not to take injection. What is the story behind? At one time, for some reason, he had to take injection. And Swami Brahmananda said, he went to him, shall I take it? Don't go towards injection. Whole life he avoided injection. That was more probably for prevention of cholera, this, that. But even for normal pain, killing, he never, yeah, he never took injection. Very strange that to hold on to this. Hmm. So that is how America he avoided. And Brahmanji, yeah, one other story I read that when Swami Avedanda went, at the end five, I think, he wanted him to accompany him. But he was not very willing, and Maharaj did not want it. So he refused till the last. Then, but Maharaj sent him to see him off in Bombay. Then Abhidhanda said, Do you respect me? Well, yes, Maharaj. Then should you not hear me when I am requesting you to come to America? Well, Maharaj, yes, I should obey you. But first I must obey the order of Maharaj. He has sent me to see you off and go back. He has not asked me to go with you. So, so I should obey you, but first thing I have to obey him. So it's strongly it went. So Ovedanji first wanted him. He was looking grand, you see. Then, of course, Paramanji came. That part of the story did not know much. So mostly he did many relief works, big, big relief work, managed in those days. And then he built the ashram in Bhuvaneshwar. Maharaj wanted to have it, so he was the man who built it up. So he was always considered to be a very practical type of man. And very bold, the story goes, when Belmont Temple was built, on the top they had to put some trishul. And even the normal workmen were afraid to climb that. With some, stairs were there and all that, ladder. But he was bold enough to climb there with the risk of his life, he put it there. They didn't make too much arrangement, safety arrangement, you see. Mm. And of course, in young days, he used to say that about 12 times he crossed the Ganges. Swimming? At one time, at one stroke. So strong he was. And he was an expert also. One story goes, he was shaving Maharaj, suddenly the razor fell from his hand. And doing like this, he caught it. And Maharaj was very impressed. Wah, wah, he said. So like that, he was very practical type. And very bold also, their idea. Hmm. Earlier days, conflict was there whether to work for the national movement or not. And later days, a gentleman you saw in Narendrapur, location he kept, he was the elder brother of Swami Shankaranda. He for 40 years he spent in Shillong as a Christian missionary. He was a he was a revolutionary. To escape the British, he went there and assumed the different name, and I think married and everything was he settled there. 
Lokeshwar knew him as a gentleman, as a Christian missionary, liberal. Then he came out after independence. This that came out. Oh, well, so there, that uh, interesting thing, how he successfully did it without telling about himself and all that. Is there any other advice you'd like to share with us that Swami Shankarananda gave you, either before or after sannyas? See, once I st went to India from uh, uh, in America to just to see the president, just to see the president, I got down. I, I, I felt that he was happy that just to see me, I got down there. I talked a little, Lord blessing. Uh, not so much personal, but to live the life methodically. With our Sunil Maharaj was my assistant, Sritya He was his attendant. His attendant. So from him, from, after him, they gave him a piece of cloth that was used by Swami Brahmananda. And it was a dhoti, wearing which Brahmananda used to give diksha also sometimes. So he, for a long time, used that cloth for giving diksha. Mm. And that cloth came to me. One day I gave with, I would use it as a chada, I did not use it as a cloth. So I have got this, but major part I have sent to Belumat, and a little piece I kept with myself for touching on the head of the devotees. That is what I do. Yeah. Behind. Uh, that was used by Swami Shankarananda while giving initiation. And it was used by Swami Brahmananda. That's why he, with great respect, kept it. And then I got it through from Astitaranda, who was his attendant, and got it. All that. His main advice was little life methodically and looking after the order. I remember when the Madhavandra had become secretary, the question was whether he will be secretary or Madhavandra. Shongaji was trustee 10, 15 years before, you see, 15 years before. But at that time he was more involved in relief work and also as assistant secretary. But then they decided to that. So he, Shankarando, uh, no, from Madhavandu was chosen, booted. That was voting at one time. And he, he, of course, still he was a treasurer, and then became vice president earlier. Vice president. He served Swami Brahmananda for a long time, but in last days, Maharaj just sent him away. And again, before his death, they called me back. The idea was that he was too much attached to him, so I sent him for Tapasya. But he was the right hand man of Maharaj for most of the decisions. So that is why his life, he did not believe in too much talking. Uh, when Vishuddhandaji used to talk more, so if anybody asked advice, well, why not go to the guest house that the radio is on? <laughs> then Gitatpandi. Yeah, uh, Vishuddhanji used to say, oh, Omunlu Maharaj has said like that? <laughs> yes. Then he was, oh, oh, you know, laugh. The radio is on, go there. <laughs> uh, that was from Shankara. Yeah. One interesting thing about Omunlu Maharaj is, he was sent to Madras and stayed there. And we inherited from him that story. He accompanied Shashi Maharaj to a class. And that day nobody came. But still Shri was gravely set. And as if Thakur is hearing, for one hour he gave his class. The well coming he asked, why did you give the class? There was nobody. Well, no, I give class not for anybody. I gave it for Thakur. So he alone without anybody. Only he of course he was present. So that story we got from, through him. 
So he was with Ramakrishnananda. Oh, he also took part in building Matri Mandir in Belumat, the Brahmananda Mandir, upstairs of Om, Om Temple, that, that part, and also embankment. These are all varieties of things that he did. He was for 11 years personal secretary of Swami Brahmananda. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Mara, did you, did you say that, sh that he went with Nivedita to Japan? Yes, Nivedita also liked him very much. So uh, some relief work he did and twice it accompanied Nivedita and Sadaranda. Sadaranda also was, Swamiji I think asked him to look after Nivedita. So even that plague time, when there was a plague, Nevita and Sadhanda were the main people. Later, relief time came, by that time he also became a sadhu. So he was always Nevita, used to take him. And Sadhanda always took him with him uh, to Rajgir, these, that different holy places. So he was evidently quite brilliant in all that, and of course, good healthy man and all that. So he was always chosen. Mm. 